Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees. Finally starting to see a little bit of spring-like weather. Yesterday we had 48 degrees, all of my colonies were flying and it was very nice to see. One thing I paid real close attention to was whether there was any pollen coming in. And I didn't quite see any just yet. But I imagine if we stay in this warmer weather, it's not going to take much more. And these maple trees are just going to bust open. And then we're going to start seeing some uh, pale yellow pollen from the maple trees. Once I start to see that, I will be uh, adding my uh, recently homemade uh, pollen patties to the colonies. And I'm very anxious to do so and start building up the colonies with brood. Um, what I want to discuss today is the caps that I made for my homemade ProVap. So let's break these caps down a little bit and get everybody on the path to making your own homemade ProVap caps. Let's go check it out. Okay, so to begin with, what you see here is one of my finished homemade caps that I made. And the way I made them was I used mo caps. You can go to their website. This is the size I used right here. And this size of uh, mo plug worked perfect with my cook bowl or my cook pot. And I'm going to overlap pictures of the size of my cook pot right here on this video so that you can make sure that these size mo caps will fit yours. Now I did have to make some modifications to them, and for all I know, Mocap already has them with the mods already done. You might be able to get to fine tune them and pre order them exactly the way you want. But I did have to make some changes to these ones. And uh, they have an option where you can return them, but there's a restocking fee and all that. And I wasn't in all that, so I just modified mine. Now, if you take my finish cap and put it next to this one, you can see that I trimmed off nearly a quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch. And the reason I did that. This copper tubing that runs back up and into the cook pot on the inside, as you can see here, you got this tubing coming to the inside, and it's very important that you have at least a quarter inch of that on the inside of the cook pot. But I didn't want this cap to push all the way down in and touch that. And if you look how far it pushes down in there, that's almost the case. So let me get it back out of here now. If we put it to the side of it and push it down in that far, you can see it's almost going to be resting right on that copper tubing. So that's the reason I cut 3 8 of an inch off of the bottom. So you can take your scroll saw, run this right through, it cuts it right off, no problem. The next modification I made, if you look to the inside, you can see um, the hole here is not as big as this hole over here. Now let me go ahead and pop this... Uh, piece of copper out of the inside and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. So if we look on the inside here, you can see I've just got a flathead screw and a small washer. And I ran the screw all the way through the bottom of the mocap and I tightened it down to what I like to call my handle. Now what this handle is, is basically a piece of um, cutting board material which is just basically um, high-density polystyrene. Um, so you can, uh, you can go to Goodwill probably and pick up an old cheap uh, cutting board. Um, it just so happens I have a pretty good piece of this material in a couple different colors. So uh, that's why I resorted to using this. Um, as far as the heat, um, it didn't, hasn't been a problem what little bit I played with the ProVap so far. Um, and just experimenting with hot water and different things. Um, the heat um, has it transferred from the rubber to the plastic, so I don't see that being much of a problem. And the plastic doesn't actually touch the cook pot, so you can see they're far enough away. Now, one thing I want to point out is you notice that the cap does not go down in there quite as far now. When this cap pushed nearly all the way in, the reason for that is, is after I cut it off and put the screw on the inside and tightened it down, it made the bottom kind of pucker outward a little bit. So now it doesn't push in as far, which is nice. Um, I like that. Um, the one problem I had after I did this and before I drilled this hole bigger, um, let's just pretend it was this hole, 
Um, this hole doesn't hold a full dose for a 10 frame colony of oxalic acid. So I had to make it bigger. And just the other day, I took it to the shop and I made the modifications and they went something like this. Okay, so the problem is, now that I've got my mo cup cut down to size, I've got it mounted to a, to a handle uh, or a grip to remove it from the cook pot. Um, the problem I have now is that the inside diameter in this hole does not fit uh, or will not hold um, the appropriate dosage to treat a hive. So I've got to bore that out. And you can see here I've taken a, a black paint marker and marked out a bigger hole. I'm going to go in my shop now and try and use a hole saw and make this hole a little bit bigger. So it turns out I don't actually have a hole saw um, this size. The size I have is a lot bigger than that. So the hole saw option is not going to work for me. Um, I did find that um, my Dremel tool, which I have the wand feature hook to, that if I use the sanding wheel and leave some of the sandpaper exposed from the end, in other words, not shove it down on the rubber wheel all the way, um, it acts as a cutter here at the top. And as you can see, it's actually cut the hole right down in there. So I've taken my utility knife and then at an angle, worked my way around all the way. So once I get down a little bit further with the uh, sanding wheel, I should be able to pull a plug out of there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this copper plug and after we screw this back onto our white plastic handle, then we were going to shove this copper cap down in this hole and that's what we will put our acid in. So that is the game plan as of now. So now I just need to finish cleaning this up. Okay, so I think I got the hole pretty well cleaned up. Um, it took a little bit more work with the utility knife, but uh, it's looking pretty good. The metal cap fits down in there pretty nice and it leaves about an eighth of an inch of a reveal sticking up out of the cap. So what I wanna do now is try and give it a little bit of a bevel around the top of the cap. And the way I'm going to do that, so I'm gonna take my ha other hammer and give us a couple smacks real easily and try and work it down and on there. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, it did give it a nice bevel at the top. And what that's gonna do is make it a little easier to put the acid in this tiny little cap. Now I believe this is like a, a half inch copper uh, cap. Okay, now to reassemble this cap. The very first thing we've got is a washer that goes down inside of the cap. Uh, we've got a screw, it's just a regular wood screw. Um, you've actually got to take and uh, screw this all the way through the rubber um, before you can screw it on here just because the rubber is so thick and dense. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll uh, catch back up. Okay, so as you can see I've got the screw started. I've got a little bit of the tip sticking out the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and line that tip up with my hole and my handle and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, so I've got the mocap tight to my uh, plastic handle now. Now I can take and just simply push my copper cap. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it down in there now. So now we have our finished cap. Looks pretty good, huh? Um, and just to show you, I've got some auxilic acid right here. If I can get the cap off of this one, one-handed. Um, it takes one gram to treat um, a colony, a 10 frame colony. Got all these, these notes right down here on my lid. Um, one dose, one gram, a quarter teaspoon. One nuke is a half a gram per five frames. 10 frames is one gram per 10 frames. So it would be one gram. And we know that one gram is a quarter teaspoon. And the reason I have that converted is because it came with a quarter teaspoon scoop. So one full scoop is one gram, therefore is 10 frames. Um, if you're gonna go a double deep, you would want two grams. So let's go ahead and check this. There's one. 
and there two. So it holds two grams. It's kind of a tight fit, but it does fit. Uh, I guess you could take this and give it a little packing, but at the same time, you don't want to pack it down in there because actually, once you uh, put this onto your uh, cook pot, you want it to fall down in the cook pot and not remain in the lid. So packing it probably isn't a good idea. Um, I don't really see any issues with it only holding two grams. Now, if you wanted to go, if you wanted it to hold a little more, you could always bore this out a little bit bigger and maybe get a three quarter inch copper cap. So that would be an idea there. But for right now, I think this is what I'm going to run with um, until I see a problem with it. So for those of you that have already made your own version of the ProVap, I would love to hear um, some alternatives. Maybe you used a different cap. Um, what did you use? Um, could you share a link? That could be informative to a lot of people besides myself and greatly appreciated. So if you have any questions or comments on my homemade ProVap or the mocaps, leave them down below. If you like the video, throw it a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and make sure you click on the little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching, folks. Oh, and hey, one more thing. Um, you know, I've been mentioning this Patreon a lot, and I don't mean to shove it in your face, but uh, I'm kind of thinking that a lot of you think all of the content on there has a charge to it, and that's not the case. There is a lot of free posts um, that I'm leaving on there, and I welcome you to come over and comment and respond. Um, I look forward to reading your comments and learning what's going on with your bees and uh, maybe sharing a little bit of knowledge to help you out. So, uh, thanks again, folks. <laughs>